I've been in the union about 30 years now, and we can see through the union the cooperation between these guys and generating work and keeping us busy, and that's what we need to see in the future to keep these kind of jobs running and going. And uh, we're happy that they're on our side, and we're happy that uh, we can support them as well. So here's the secretary to tell you all about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Al, for being part of the program. Thanks for, uh, most importantly, what you and fellow union members across the state and across the country have been doing to build America and to make sure that these investments turn into results for everybody. We're proud to be with you today. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Mayor Andy Shores. He mentioned we first got to know each other in the community of American mayors back when I was mayor of South Bend, Indiana. And I, I think in many ways the job has only gotten tougher since I proudly wore the title. But uh, I will say, and I think the mayor will agree, it sure would have been nice back then when I was mayor if there was a bipartisan infrastructure law delivering a trillion dollars in investments across America to cities uh, like South Bend, Indiana, cities like Lansing, and communities across the Midwest and across the country. Uh, that day has come. And as uh, mayors like Mayor Shore uh, look at their vision for a growing economy and a safer community and better transportation systems, uh, that's no longer just uh, ideas on the drawing board. It's turning into reality because the funding is finally here. Uh, likewise, I want to thank my friend, Representative Alyssa Flatkin, as she explained so well, none of these problems, unless there is the funding that Representative Slotkin and others put together and voted for in this bipartisan infrastructure law. It's easy to talk now like it would have happened no matter what, so let us remember that during that period of months that she was describing, as she and her House colleagues were reaching across the aisle and engaging with each other, that the political obituary of this legislation was written half a dozen times by Washington commentators. It was far from certain that this infrastructure plan would become a reality. Indeed, the previous administration promised to deliver one and failed. Uh, so this isn't something that just happens on its own. It happens when you have the right kind of leadership. We have that kind of leadership in Representative Slotkin, uh, who looks across party lines and uh, across some of those old divisions to just get stuff done. So thanks for everything you do. Um, and I know we got uh, a lot of state leaders here. I want to uh, recognize Governor Whitmer and her fantastic team. I want to thank uh, Greg Brunner for uh, uh, both the tour uh, and the expert work. Uh, I want to thank the Chief Infrastructure Officer for uh, uh, from Michigan, Zach. Uh, I saw him out here. So there you are. Um, and, uh, you know, every, every time I see the governor, she teases me and just calls me the secretary of Fix the Damn Roads. Uh, so we understand what our assignment is back in Washington uh, to be a partner to the state of Michigan. But I will say our federal dollars go a lot further when you have leaders who understand the importance of infrastructure. And that is exactly uh, what you have here in Michigan. So I've had the privilege of uh, being uh, literally across the entire country. I've visited uh, every one of our 50 states just in the time that I've had this job. And in the last few months, that's really been uh, about visiting active construction. We've been visiting sites from a new rail line going in in North Carolina to a new bridge we're putting in in Maine to a new port facility in Wisconsin. But this is a particularly welcome visit, and not just because it's driving distance from home and I'll be able to see my kids before bedtime tonight, uh, but because this is something that will really bring safety benefits as well as convenience benefits to so many people in this region. We're supporting it with over $36 million to contribute toward making 127 safer and less congested. We're also here not just because our focus on what is being built, but on how it's being built and on who is building. I know Lyuna is here. The operating engineers are here. And I just had a chance to see how they're helping get 127 improved ahead of schedule, which is part of 175,000 miles of roadway we're improving. They may not be here, but UAW workers are going to be benefiting from what we're doing and are benefiting as manufacturing plants are expanding and reopening and retooling, including some major facilities here, like the $500 million support for the Lansing Grand River Assembly plant to make sure they are at the forefront of the EV economy, retaining 650 jobs, creating another 50, and uh, bringing training for workers here too. IBEW, helping install and maintain a growing network of EV chargers 
Uh, and I should note that the number of EV chargers in America has now doubled to 192,000 ports, twice as many as we had when President Biden took office. And I expect that uh, uh, grant that we've awarded to Lansing is going to go to very good use uh, as Mayor Shore builds out uh, those chargers to make sure more people here can participate in that. Uh, so bottom line, uh, we are fixing the damn roads, as Governor Whitmer would say, uh, and uh, everything over and under and around those roads, too. And it's creating a lot of good paying jobs while we're at. I'm thinking about the UA plumbers and pipe fitters, local 333, building new manufacturing and uh, facilities, airports, clean energy facilities, and now having to build their own facility up uh, because there are so many apprentices joining that they can't fit in the current space. Creating construction jobs to construct a bigger training facility to support people in construction jobs is about as big of a full circle moment as I can imagine. And they have gone from 40 apprentices a year to 200 entering these terrific union careers. And this is happening across the country. Uh, UA uh, has grown by 21,000 members just since this administration began. And the result of that is that the whole country gets stronger. When more work comes to uh, union households and families, that's putting the industrial back into the industrial Midwest. And it means presence under the tree. It means a new car or truck in the driveway. It means the chance to own a home. And that's the transformation that's happening across this country. For too long, Americans were looking at the state of our infrastructure saying, why can't we have nice things? And the answer was, uh, it was a choice uh, because the funding just wasn't there. That's what we've changed. Project after project from uh, six figure projects to uh, fix a crosswalk or a streetlight somewhere uh, to projects that will invest uh, hundreds of millions of dollars to save lives like the one uh, that we're celebrating today. In a few hours, I'm gonna be with President Biden who will make major announcement on expanding and cementing gains in measures like project labor agreements, registered apprenticeships and more to support union workers, which is a huge difference uh, between those who have just talked the talk and those who have walked the walk, including literally in the case of President Biden, the first sitting president to walk a picket line in the United States in modern times. So I know Labor Day is a few days ago, but I, I don't think it's too late to say happy Labor Day because it's a labor week, a labor season, and a season of infrastructure in the life of our country. And yeah, I got to say, I, I thought the coolest part of this job would be uh, seeing the, the vehicles and the technology. I got to kick the f tires on a 747. That was pretty cool. Uh, but uh, really the best part of this job has been moments like I had earlier today uh, with electrical worker apprentices. Uh, because when I'm with the apprentices, I get a chance to see how they are not just transforming our infrastructure, they're transforming their futures. You feel that as they stand up taller going out, know that they will be providing a good income for their families and also providing better infrastructure for our economy. And it's a thrill to be partnering with all of you in order to make that happen. So thanks for the chance to celebrate this great project. No pressure, but I'm looking forward to seeing reports of it being completed on time and on budget, as I know it will. And we're excited about the road ahead. And with that, I think we have a little bit of time for uh, questions from members of the media. Okay, folks, if you have a question, please raise your hand. You. We're going to keep it tight, and as a reminder, we're going to try to keep the questions on topic. Go ahead. Um, I know you can't talk about the elections too much, but um, you mentioned various pots of money that the federal government has. Uh, if there is a change in administration, could some of that money be blocked still? And therefore, is there an incentive to get more grants? Well, we're certainly working hard to get these dollars out the door and to make sure that we're not just announcing a good award, but we're seeing dirt moving like we are right here on this site. Uh, I won't comment on the election, but I will say a policy change could put infrastructure funding at risk. Uh, we've seen that in the uh, House Republican appropriation proposal, for example, which would strip away resources from some of the infrastructure projects we have in mind. And I would also point out that when uh, you hear uh, congressional Republicans and others talking about uh, killing the tax incentives that are powering the made in America EV industry, uh, that would kill auto manufacturing jobs in the EV industry and uh, the building trades jobs going into uh, those facilities. Just uh, right here, there are 500 workers from the electrical workers alone just working on a single plant 
uh, that is going up right here in this region. Uh, and it's a reminder of the fact that this EV economy isn't just about cleaner air for our children to breathe. It's about good paying union jobs. And I would be concerned about any policy change that would put those good paying union jobs at risk. Sustainable is transportation funding at the federal level of long term. This is a special money that's making this happen. We're in year three three of a five-year build. So right now we're in the middle of this round of investments, but the reality is we know that there's gonna to continue to be more need. Uh, the return on investment for good infrastructure funding is extraordinary. And so to me, the question isn't, can we afford to fix the damn roads and have good bridges and uh, build up our capacity and passenger rail and fix our ports? The question is, can we afford not to? And I think the answer is no, we can't. Well, uh, we know that there is an international process uh, that is underway there. Uh, what I will say is that while uh, FIMSA doesn't decide what pipelines get built, we do take very seriously our responsibility to make sure anything uh, that is built is safe. Millions of miles of pipeline are under uh, FIMSA's watch, and we work every day to make sure they meet the highest safety standards. Okay, folks, sorry. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you.